Please enjoy to the story MPD Multiple Personality Disorder by Polytheistic. Dreams are an and number sign X27T reality. The bell rang as blue and her mother entered the convenience store. The clerk watched as they disappeared down the candy aisle, with an eyebrow raised. Blue bounced around like a bubbly six-year-old very eager to get the award she earned. Her eyes scanned over all the various types available, her mom urging her to hurry so she can get home and start dinner. Blue nodded and grabbed the pink circular container holding gum inside. Hi. Blue greeted the clerk happily as she sat her gum on the counter. My mommy said I've been a good girl today so I get candy. She explained. The man behind the counter smiled, wringing the gum up and handing the gum back to the 13-year-old girl. Her mother paid and thanked the clerk and they swiftly left, the bell making a ringing behind them. Dot 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 the fork clanked against her plate as Blue went for another piece of lettuce. Her father, Henry sat in the chair in front of her as her mother, Jane, sat to her right. How did it go, taking her to therapy? Henry spoke as if Blue wasn't sitting there. It went well, she did slip into the personality of Mittens mid-session. She was nervous and stressed the therapist said. That's what triggered Mittens to come out. Jay explained. The conversation went on, just like every other night. Blue had no input and just sat and listened. Finally finished she pushed her chair out and excused herself. After washing her dish she quickly ran upstairs and prepared for bed. A few minutes later a sleep consumed her. The day's events fading away. Trapped. It's like riding in the passenger's side in a car. You see things but you're not driving. That's how it is for Blue. She has no control and can only watch. Sometimes though everything is completely dark and she tracked in her own mind, not knowing what happened. Before all this her family was happy, sweet, and would get together every once in a while. Now that barely happens and her family has become strict and afraid of what she can do. Same thing with her friends. Blue had many and they all hung out. Soon many dropped to one because Blue isolated herself from the world. She was homeschooled for sixth grade and started going to a public school for seventh. After knowing how to take control. Barely. Every day wasn't like that though and she did have her days just hoping it would go away. Blue sat in bed staring at the ceiling not ready for the school day ahead of her. Mondays sucked and she just couldn't seem to escape it. No one could really. The only good part really is seeing her friend. Just. Blue haven't told just about her disorder. She told no one because she didn't want to be judge. Of course just wasn't one to judge but she couldn't risk it. Only a few teachers, the counselor, and the principal knew due to her parents but that's all it would be. Huffing out a pound sigh she slipped out of bed, walking toward the closet to pull out dark blue jeans and a white shirt. The dress code became boring quick but she had to live with it. Grabbing her undergarments she walked towards the bathroom and started the shower water. She scrunched her brows and the whispers in her head began, getting louder and louder. The unpredictability of school getting to her, bringing up unwanted opinions. Don't go act sick there is always the option of death. Blue shook the thoughts away before any unwanted people came from the depths of her mind. Quickly she jumped in the shower ignoring the growing headache. Dot 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 have a nice day sweetie. Jane mom said pulling up to the school. Blue waved a goodbye and walked through the double doors instantly dreading the day. Turning the corner she meet up with Jess and her group. They were your typical I don't care what you say group. They were into supernatural things, stating out of the box as much as they could. Blue wasn't really into what they were so she just gravitated more to Jess. Just understood and they would trade off with things.
making it fun for them to do things they both liked. She gave just a smile and waved to the small group. Blue I'm so happy you're here. Just smiled. Today if you're not doing anything after school we should go to anime club since you've never been. Dot Blue shrugged. Uncomfortable with the idea. She just really wanted to go home after school. The whispers began again as Blue was conflicted with her own thoughts. I'll consider it. She decided the smile on her face disappearing. Yay. Great. Well I'll see you in science. Just having Blue a quick hug as the bell rang and the hallways cleared out. Blue didn't want to lose the only friend she had really so of course she was going to say yes. You're a follower what a shame. Doesn't even know how to say no toughen up a little. Secrets. The day went by quickly and it was sixth period. She was sort of scared to go to this anime club. Blue didn't know what to expect but if she had just by her side the all would be okay. So Blue who won the battle of Gettysburg. The history teacher questioned. Dot Blue wasn't even listening. She was more focused on daydreaming. UMM dot 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 the confederates. Everyone burst out laughing and Blue cowered into her seat trying to hide the way her face was becoming bring red. A headache emerged and she knew what was coming. Dot 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 Skylar sat up straight and had a look of anger. Dot sorry sir meant union. And what are you all laughing at because nothing's funny. She spoke loudly looking around the class. Everyone shut up and she turned back to her group as they shut up to. The teacher just continued with the lesson and Skylar smirked. Blue never stood up for herself but she had Skylar and that's all she needs, thought Skylar but she couldn't be any more wrong. Finally the day was over but there was still anime club. Jess came rushing up to Blue not knowing she wasn't herself, talking all about this club. Skylar just zoned her out and nodded as they finally came to the teacher's door. Every club has to have a teacher administrator. That's the only part she paid attention to in the blabbering that was just. Surprisingly a lot of people were in this club and it was very loud. Jess and Skylar sat in the front to desks as these boys walk up to the board. They talked for a while about some things and started playing the anime. Skylar sighed. Just when can we leave? She asked in a bored tone. S-A-H-H-H-H, the good part is coming up. She whispered. Skylar groaned. Well, I'm leaving. Dot, she said. Jess instantly looked at her. What I though you said you're gonna stay. I'll rather be somewhere else. Skylar said sourly. Jess grabbed her arm making Skylar cringe. Let dot go dot now dot she said though gritted teeth. Fear was evident in just and Skylar got out the seat. Grabbed her backpack and left dot 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 after all that walking she made it to the house saying Blue's parents cars weren't there. Knocking a maid answered and Skylar walked in running up into her room. Flopping on the bed she sighed over this day. Finally going back into the mind. Greater than 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 Blue woke up very confused. Looking around urgently she seen she was in her room. Her heart beat slowing down. What did I do? She whispered to herself as she laid back down. Holding her pillow close to herself she tried her best to remember but nothing came to mind. Small sniffles were emitted throughout the room. She was scared for others and her own self. All these personalities, Mittens, Skylar, Jeff, unknown, they were all too much and days like these she wished she was normal. After being in the car accident with her now dead grandparents nothing was ever the same. Friends. No. Skylar slammed her hand on the desk. These teachers think they could control her but they had another thing coming. 
Young lady, you do not yell like that in my class. Go stand outside while I sign you a referral. The teacher shot back. Gladly. She smirked and walked out the classroom. She waited until someone came to escort her. These teachers definitely didn't trust her. The girl was shy and was classified as the nerd. Skylar looked down at her seeing she was really short, like 5'4 and Blue was 5'8. Blue admired her though and Skylar was the one to talk to her. Yeah she pretty and smart but Blue has everything going for her. The thing is Blue never talked to the girl or anything, her confidence non-existent. Also believing she screw things up. So what's your name? Skylar asked in a bored tone. The girl jumped a little L Layla. Well, UMM nice to meet you. Skylar said in a questioning tone question. Yes, same. Layla smiled. Why do you stutter? There's nothing to be nervous about. Skylar asked as the dean's office came into view. Skylar stopped and looked down embarrassed. Oh wait no. Didn't mean ear like in a bad way. You don't even have to answer. She blagged. Then no it he is f fine. She began walking again. It's s my y s speech. I'm mg getting help t for i it. They stopped and walked into the office. Skylar nodded and waved goodbye. Surprised she basically apologized to her earlier. Now that wasn't on her mind though. It was the dean who was heading towards her direction. Not my problem. She shrugged her anger gone and letting Blue return. Home. Blue walked out of the dean's office feeling defeated. Her parents would definitely send her back to therapy. It wasn't even her doing but they wouldn't even let her explain. She was let go for the rest of the day, only receiving detention. Walking into the cafeteria she headed to the vending machines and grabbed a bag of chips. Be blue. Someone yelled dot turning around she saw Layla waving and calling her over. Slowly and cautiously Blue walked to her table, trying not to get tripped by any of these idiots. She sat beside Layla and smiled saying hi. Layla introduced Blue to all her friends at the table. There was Mae, Jace, Connor, and Carter. Happily they all accepted Blue as one of their own. Sitting there she just enjoyed the moment and laughed at their jokes and commented on the teachers and homework. Blue felt genuinely happy for once in a while. She was actually getting along with them and starting to create new friendships. Not feeling different at all in this moment. The day was over and they all exchanged numbers with Blue. Created a group chat called Savage Squad. Walking into her home she heard the TV in meaning someone was home early today. You're home. Her mother said as Blue walked into the living room. I got a call from your school. What happened? Blue sighed as she sank into the couch. Her happy mood coming to an end. I was sent to the office but it wasn't me who started TH. You need to get this under control. She raised her voice. Don't you think I tried? Blue spoke, bewildered. Well try harder or this problem will ruin your life. And it's not good for the family image. So I'm a problem. She whispered to herself. Jane stopped and froze realizing what she said. Oh Blue I'm sorry okay. Sweetie I'm just really stressed. She wouldn't have it though. Blue's breath increased as she stood up. Tears built up in the sockets of her eyes and everything was blurred. The only thing that was going though her head was that she was a problem. Her chest felt like it was closing up and she started sobbing. It's okay. Take deep breaths. Her mom cooed trying to stop her daughter from having a panic attack. Get away from me. Blue scream. This was all too much for her but in time's record it wasn't blue anymore. Dangerous territory. Get off of me. 
unknown yelled at Jane. Sweetie calm down. You're not my mom. Blue hates you. She not the problem you are. The anger built up inside of unknown at the way this family treated Blue. Will she forgive me? Question mark. Her mother spoke. Voice cracking and tears built. No. Unknown snarled running up the stairs into the room to isolate herself as the pace of her breath quickened. Underscore 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 Unknown sat against the door as she heard pounding on the other side. Jane's shouts could be heard but she could do nothing as the door was locked. Unknown began to gasp for air lungs just weren't functioning correcting anymore. Clawing at her chest for at least some oxygen but nothing came. Her vision went fuzzy as her head hit the carpeted floor and everything went blacked. Blue blinked rapidly as bright lights blinded her. The smell of disinfectant hit her as she sat up confused as to where she was. Once her vision cleared up she looked around to see she was in the hospital. Her eyes trailed up the tube that was in her arm connected to the IV. Glad to see you're awake, Blue. The doctor waved with some papers. Your mom brought you here because you had a panic attack and blacked out. Do you remember any of it? Blue looked over to her mother then back at the doctor and shook her head. Number well everything thing is good now but I did give your mother some suggestions as of what to do if this happens again. But I do have some concerns about your disorder and the true harm that you can cause yourself. He pulled out a paper and handed it to Jane. Here the contact to your last therapist. I hope everything goes well for you, Blue. He gave a small smile. The only thing going though her head was, I am just the problem. Problems? So your first thought was to scream at her. Henry shouted. They all were in the living room and he was pacing the floor while Jane was typing away on her computer. Blue sat there quietly not wanting to say something wrong. Yes, okay. I was trying to quickly address the problem and get it over with. Did it ever cross your mind that she was panicking? I bet you didn't even try to let her explain. You just jumped to conclusions like always. This continued on. They both got in each other's face. Getting up Blue left out the living room and went outside. As always Betty, their next door neighbor, was gardening her flowers. As she looked up Blue waved at her and she wakes back smiling. Looking up at the sky the clouds passed by and the sun was bright. Blue wished she could have stayed here forever looking at the sky. Of course this moment got ruined as she heard glass shatter. Turning around she ran inside checking her surroundings. Blue let out a shaky sigh seeing that everything was alright. Just a broken family picture on the floor. Back to school. All day the only thing Blue though about was her family falling apart. And believed it was all her fault. Jane talked things over with the principal and she let it slide and Blue did her time in detention. Getting off the bus she opened the school doors, hearing all the loud talking and screams. Sighing Blue kept walking trying to get to the library before the bell rang. A set of hair caught her eye as it ran towards her and developed her into a hug. OMG where were you? I was fracking worried for two days. Just shouted, getting the attention of her other friends. I'm sorry I ha. And then when I called or text you wouldn't answer. My dad took my phone. Blue said simply. I was gone because I had some things to figure out. Just looked at Blue worriedly and Blue just walked past her not wanting to answer any other questions. Finally she got into the library. Weaving though all those people. Looking around finally finding a book just as the bell rang. The librarian checked it out and she was on her way. Dot 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 second period she had science with just. 
The teacher called attendance and announced that they had a few minutes to talk while he talked to another teacher. Hey Blue I'm sorry about this morning. I was just worried. Are you okay though? Just asked. She nodded putting on a smile totally. I feel like there's something you're hiding. You can't tell me anything you know that. Blue nodded again and faced forward as the teacher began the lesson. The one thing Jess doesn't understand is everything would be different if Blue told her. So she decided to keep it to herself. Phone calls. In life you're supposed to be anything and do anything you want. That's what our parents tell us as we're young. Then once we're older they say if you want to get this you have to be that or those jobs don't allow tattoos. So you can't get one until you retire. So where does a person with a mental illness fit in it? Blue had had three hours to herself and she didn't really know what to do as she scrolled though her Twitter feed on her iPad. Sighing she went into the kitchen and grabbed her home phone. Dialing the number. H hello. Layla answered. Hey Layla this is Blue. She said happily. Yo H hey this is I is a dif different number here. Yeah I got my phone taken. Blue said sadly. They chatted for some time until Layla had to go and they said their goodbyes. Now only one more hour till Jane or Henry came home. Getting bored Blue decided to go on YouTube and watch her favorite, Joey Gracefa. That was soon interrupted by the sound of the door closing. Who could that be? Slowly Blue tired toed toward the front entrance. Afraid that maybe a mass murderer would pop out and bam she dead. Instead her brown eyes seen someone else. Leo. Blue yelled. A smile stretched across her face and she longed at him. Hey teddy bear. You're so grown up now. Leo laughed hugging her back. Leo left for college some years ago and only visited on special occasions. She really had missed her big brother go out those years. Wait why are you here? She questioned. You don't want me here? He gasped. Blue shook her head wildly. Surprised it didn't fall off. Well mom and dad called and said they'll be going on a trip and I though you and I could hang out while they go. I had lots of time and I miss hanging with my little sis. Blue smiled a little her feelings hurt that they didn't tell her but still glad that her brother was there with her. Also I heard that things haven't been so good for you. He said as they walked over to the guest room. He sat his suitcase on the bed and started to unpack. While Blue leaned against the doorway. So when are they leaving exactly? She tried to change the subject. In two days, for the end of this week. Stop trying to change the subject. He said stern. Bug fine. I'm not in the best place right now but it's whatever. Mom and Dad are just making me feel bad about something I try to but can't control. Blue sighed. He stopped putting away his clothes and looked up at her. She quickly walked out the room the mood dropping ten feet. Blue, it's okay? He said walking close behind her. Don't want to talk about it. She said walking into the kitchen and opening the fridge. Well too bad we need to talk. He retorted, sitting on the stool by the counter. No. Blue yelled. She didn't want to get mad. Really she didn't. Things just don't go her way and the whispers came back, her head begging to throb. Poor Blue can't control anything can you dot slamming the fridge Blue took deep breaths not wanting to face her brother. Smiles. Leo stood from his seat and slowly approved the sniffing girl dot Blue Bear. He whispered afraid that she might break. That's exactly what Blue did she knew her breakdown was coming. Leo just took her into his arms, sad to his is little sister like this. He walked her up to her room as she cried in his arms. 
He lied down next to her as she cried a little while longer. A few minutes later her small snorts could be heard as sleep consumed her dot 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 12 colon 0 0 am read the clock on Blue's bedside table. She stirred awake. Stretching her limbs she bumped into another body. Relief settled in as she remembered it was just her brother. Getting out of bed quietly she walked downstairs and grabbed a bottle of water. Walking into the living room she sat on the couch and grabbed the remote. Flipping those channels she decided to watch YouTube instead. Setting it up on the TV Blue began watching Joey Great Seppa and smiled at how goofy he is. What are you doing up this early? Henry yawned. Can't he sleep? She commented lowly. He sat in the recliner and yawned once again. So you and mom are going to be leaving? He questioned. Mark yes. He sighed. I'm sorry we haven't been good parents but once we get back from this trip we will figure things out. Blue nodded. He stood up and handed her phone back and walked up the stairs leaving her with a smile and a yelling Joey Great Seppa on TV. You win. Getting back to school Blue put her unneeded things in her locker and approached Jess and her group. Hey Jay. So Jess did you do the homework last night? One of her friends interrupted Blue. Blue scowled as she never liked that girl. Yes I did and hey Blue. I've missed talking with you. She smiled and gave her a hug. After, she just went back to the conversation with her friends. Blue feeling like she wasn't one of them. Turning away Blue left and went to first period. Too soon second period came and just sat next to her. She kept rambling on about first period and how much she couldn't stop laughing. Blue didn't reply back so just knew something was up. UMM did I do something wrong? Yeah, matter of fact you did. Blue sarcastically laughed. What did I do? Just asked with attitude. You've been ignoring me all this day and we only talk about what you want. She rolled her eyes and the teacher began talking. Well it's not my fault that you're have issues and don't talk to me lately. Just snapped. Blue stared at her in shock. She looked at her to realizing what she said. Fine you win just best friends forever, right? Blue stood up and grabbed her stuff, sitting somewhere else for today. Dot 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 Blue sighed as she threw her phone on the bed. Not knowing where her and just stood was stressing her out. Dot you shouldn't be treated this way. She s not your real friend. Dot he trust her anymore. She nothing. The whispers were getting to her. And that night she forgot the last text she sent just dot 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 it's best if we're not friends anymore. Past your bedtime. Run dot 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 that's all I could do dot 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 the footsteps behind me approached me as I speed up my pace. I saw light up the head dot 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 almost there dot 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 I was flung back the person's shadow hovering over me like the night. More and more shadows circled me and I trembled with fear. I screamed as they all reached for me. You belong to us. We. Blue shot up sweating looking around frantically. It was Saturday and her parents were gone. Just her in her room having a nightmare. Stepping out of bed she put on her house shoes and threw on her pink robe. Checking Leo's room he wasn't there and didn't come home last night. That's weird. Shrugging she walked into the kitchen looking at the time on the stove. 5.40 a.m. The front door opened then closed as Blue walked out the kitchen after grabbing a water bottle. Walking into the hallway she was meet with a drunk Leo and his sober she de assumed girlfriend. Come on we could have much more fun babe. Leo slurred. Well now you're home so where you are. Her eyes made contact with Blue's. Soon after Leo did too and Blue just stared at them too tired to care. Blue, you should be in bed. Leo spoke. His face showed a sign of guilt. I had a bad dream. Going back to sleep anyway. 
She shrugged not paying attention to him and walked back up the stairs, closing the door behind her and locked it. Looking out the window, the girl's car drove away. Blue had trouble falling back to sleep so she turned on the TV. A few minutes later Blue began falling back to sleep not before her door opened though. Blue, you okay? Leo spoke softly sounding sober. She pulled the cover over her head and plunged her ears trying to go back to sleep. Dot the bed shifted and Leo laid next to her. Blue pushed and kicked him, trying to get him to leave. I'm not going anywhere Blue. He yawned. Sighing in defeat she threw the covers off of her and scooted as far away from him as she could. I'm sorry. He whispered. For what? She asked looking up at the ceiling. For coming home loud and drunk. Blue had no comment. The girl who brought me home tonight. Her name is Stella. We've been together for two months. She came to visit and we decided to go to a bar. I was planning on you guys meeting but not this way. Well thanks for the story but goodbye now. You have your own bed. She sighed. Yours is more comfortable. He was really getting on her last nerve. Leave dot now dot. No dot yes dot no dot grabbing her pillow blue walked out of her room and downstairs, settling down on the couch. Ah don't be that way. Leo said coming down the stairs. She flipped him off and heard him gasp at the action. Blue exclamation point here all this time. I thought you were innocent. She burst out laughing and rolled off the couch, never going to get some sleep. Late night phone calls. Leo was soon asleep after they started an action movie. Going over the schedule she had for this week coming up remembering she has a therapist appointment tomorrow, technically today. Blue took out the movie and walked back up to her room. She laid down and began to fall asleep. Minutes later her phone rang and she sighed in frustration. What? Be Blue? She heard a sniffle. Layla. Hey sorry um what's the matter? Are you crying? I I I. Hey calm down and take your time. Blue said sitting up in bed and starting to get worried. She hiccuped then continued, I am need so someone to tea talk to. Okay I'm here, I'm listening. Layla talked to Blue about how they had her father's funeral today. He died of cancer. She tries to hold it in all the emotions and look strong this week but she couldn't. Blue was happy that Layla trusted her and was the only one shed called. If Layla trusts her then Blue could trust Layla. Hey it's gonna be okay I promise. I'll always be here if you need to vent or just need to talk. How about for a clock you come over and we can hang and talk. Sounds good. Sorry about calling you so late. No problem always here to help a friend. Blue giggled. See you at four. Bye Blue. She said goodbye and they hung up. Finally sleep. Blue wake up we have to leave in an hour. No. She rolled over in bed. Come on. Get out then. Blue shouted throwing my pillow at him. Her door slammed and slowly but surely she trudged out of bed. She threw on some black skinny jeans and a yellow crop top. Slipping on black flats too. Simply throwing her hair in a ponytail. She stomped down the stairs making extra noise. Finally we have like 30 minutes to get there. Leo said with a cup of coffee in his hands with a bagel. Blue snatched his bagel and ate the rest while making a cup of orange juice. Without words they left the house and into the car. It's too hot for this. Life goes on. Blue's POV Hi Blue it's nice to meet you. Dr. Dot Carter said. Are all therapists this perky? I sighed as I sat on the plush couch. Wondering what Leo's doing out in the waiting room. You don't talk much you. 
she asked grabbing the notebook and a pen. I shrugged as she crossed her legs in the seat in front of me. Tell me about yourself, Blue. I hut like she really wanted to know. She just gets money from this but I might as well corporate dot I like McDonald's and YouTube. I said in a small voice. So I see. Do you have a favorite YouTuber? My daughter loves this YouTuber named Troy Sivan. He's my second favorite. My first is Joey Gracefa. He's an inspiration. I smiled looking down at my lap. Why is that? He shows that you can be yourself and be different. He's just doing things that makes him happy. I wanna do that too. She nodded well blue. You can do what makes you happy no matter what. Now your parents have told me about your disorder. That's where the decent conversation ended and I instantly got nervous. I don't want to talk about it. That's why you're here Blue. Talk to me. I'm here to help. She gave a smile. I stood up and walked to the window looking out at the world. That's what most people say until they give up on me. How about this? She said ripping the paper out her notebook and set it on the coffee table. How about you write down some things about you and how you feel dealing with your family, friends, and personalities. Then we can go from there. Slowly I walked back to the couch and she handed me a pencil and I began writing. Dot 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 see you on Tuesday blues. Have a nice day. Dot drive. Dot Carter waved. Dot blue gave her a slight wave, and her and Leo exited the building. Now, where do you want to go? Leo asked once we got into the car. Glad he didn't ask how it went. Looking at her phone, blue seen it was only 12:45. Well, this Sunday is gonna be a long day. Don't leave me. 4 o'clock p.m. had passed on the clock as Blue still awaited Layla. 30 minutes later she still was a no-show so Blue called her mother, Mrs. Dot Walker. Dot her heart shattered once Mrs. Dot Walker stated the incident that happened a few hours ago. Layla tried killing herself. Now Blue sit in the waiting room with Leo by her side. Dot her foot tagged as she looked at the time 5.09 p.m. Why? That was the only thing ringing go out Blue's head. How couldn't she see the truth pain Layla was in? What if she doesn't wake up? Thought Blue. That pushed her over the edge. Hey, it's gonna be okay, Blue. Calm down, take deep breaths. Leo tried to help. How do you know it's gonna be okay? Blue shouted, getting people's attention in the waiting room. She went back to tapping her foot, wiping the few tears that fell. Just hope for the best, he whispered. Hope something that's not existent. The whispers in her head began as she zoned out. Numbing silence was better than nothing. Mittens pulled Leo along the hall as they neared the cafeteria. Come on Leo. She giggled and tugged on his shirt like a six-year-old. Okay. Okay, I'm coming. He smiled, not really knowing what personality this was. He's been gone so long that he was shocked at how his sister changed in an instant. Leo bought them some gummy worms and they went back to their seats waiting for the news on Layla. Mittens couldn't be contained in the seat and began talking to some of the strangers in the room. They didn't mind though. Finally coming back Blue looked around. Leo say to her right emoting small snorts. Mrs. Dot Walker walked out of Layla's room and towards the two dot blue stood up as she approached her. Red eyes puff and eyeliner smudged. How is she? She's not up but she is in stable condition. Mrs. Dot Walker sniffed. Can I go see her? She nodded and sat in a chair looking a bit tired herself. Leo say still sound to sleep so Blue walked into the room alone. The heart monitor making the constant beeping noise. Slowly and quietly she closed the door. Taking a deep breath she turned around and faces the unconscious Layla. 
stairs threatened to spill out as she seen the way she was connected to so many wires. Then things went wrong and the heart monitor began to quicken its pace. Blue ran out the door calling for help and nurses came rushing in. It was like in the movies where doctors and nurses crowded around the person dot 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 dying. This time dot 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 it s real. Life is a game. Blue wasn't liking life at all at the moment. She was in a very depressing state as she questioned the meaning of life. She just rolling over in bed and silenced the alarm for school. Blue get up you need to get to school. Leo said as he opened the door to find Blue still in bed. She groaned and pulled the covers over her head. Come on you have school and I have to meet up with Stella. Leo threw the covers off her and grabbed her to feet. Things not going out how he planned dot 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 blue. Oh my gosh I'm so sorry. Leo exclaimed trying to calm the sobbing child. He could tell by the way she was throwing a fit on the floor that it wasn't blue dot 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 it was Newton's. The little six-year-old girl who is usually happy is throwing a tantrum. No 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 no. She screamed kicking her feet and throwing a tantrum. Leo picked the 13-year-old up and sat her back down on the bed as she began hip-hopping. It's okay calm down how about we get you ready for school and then I'll get you ice cream after. He tried to make a deal with the girl. She sat there for a while catching her breath and then slowly nodded. A smile spread across her face and she nodded furiously. Leo told her to go take a shower as he picked out a plant shirt and jeans for her, handing them to her and sitting on the bed. Listening out in case she breaks something. She sighed and slowly looked up at the teacher as he called her name. What's the square root of ten? Blue shrugged just as the bell rang and she dashed out of class not wanting to stay there any longer. The day was already bad enough since Layla wasn't there dot 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 she was taking time off. Blue was glad she okay though and that's all that matters. Slinging her my backpack over her arm she walked out the door searching for Leo and his car. It was already embarrassing enough with the incident this morning and she just wanted to sleep. His car pulled up and he rolled down the window. Come on we're going for ice cream. He smiled. Blue looked towards the passenger side as Stella waved and smiled her way. Blue gave a small smile trying not to be rude. All she wanted to do was go home. I really done and number sign X27 T care. They talked and talked about things and how Stella was getting to know what she wants to do. Blah 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 blah. Staring out the window, Blue looked at the cars passing by wishing they could take me with them. She'd rather be with strangers than with these two being all lovely. They stopped at a red light as Leo and Stella held hands and smiled at each other. Can we go home instead? Like we planned. I didn't really mean what I said this morning. We don't have to go get ice cream. Blue was really getting irritated. Dot they retreated and the light turned green. She thought they probably forgot about her. Well Stella wants to go. Take dot me dot home dot she said though gritted teeth. Really over today and this couple. Leo sighed and soon went a different direction. Stella looking at him. Blue could see a smirk on her face and wanted to punch her right in the jaw. Are you sure Blue? Leo asked. Can't we all just stay at the house and watch movies or play games? In the beginning it was supposed to be Leo and Blue date. When was Stella added to the equation? Not everyone agrees on your plans Blue. Dot Stella said. Looking at Leo he didn't say anything as they pulled into the driveway. She grabbed her bag and slammed the door. The windows were down so Blue took this opportunity. Screw both of you. Hope you have fun. And with that she walked into the house.
The time was 11.56 p.m. Band Blue couldn't sleep. It didn't help that the exams started tomorrow, too. Sighing she shut her eyes and tried tuning out her thoughts, letting sleep envelope her. Watched Project Almanac today. Dot, dot, dot. My mind is forever changed. Have a nice day, everyone. Awkward. It was 6.30 a.m. as Blue sat her empty bowl into the sink. Leo never came home last night which worried Blue a little but tried not to think about it. After throwing a blue shirt and blue jeans on she slipped on her converse and was out the door. You okay Blue? May asked. It was lunch and Layla still wasn't back but Blue hoped she was better. She nodded smiling at her dot totally. We're all gonna hang at the park after school. You coming? Connor asked. Everyone at the table looking at Blue. She shifted uncomfortably. Um dot 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 I don't think so I ha. Oh come on. Carter retorted. Don't force her. May sighed. Blue quickly stood up grabbing her binder and rushed out the cafeteria to the library. I can't do this today. She took deep breaths knowing what was gonna happen if she didn't. I'm such a emotional wreck. Nothing adds up in the end. She sat at the circular table and sighed laying her head down. I'm sorry if we made you uncomfortable. Quickly she sat up looking to the side and watched meet with a pair of brown eyes. Connor. Greater than 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 Hey people hope you're having or had a lovely day. B Y E E E Plans Blue walked home counting the lines in the sidewalk. Thinking back to what Connor had said. I'm really sorry we didn't mean to make you feel uncomfortable. We forget you're a newbie to the group. He chuckled looking at Blue. She just sat there and nodded not really knowing how to respond. You okay? Blue looked at him and smiled. Yeah. You seem like a mysterious girl Blue. Everyone got their secrets I guess. What yours? She asked not thinking before she spoke. I'm sorry you don't have to answer that. It's fine but I will tell you if you come with us tomorrow after school to my place. Deal. He held out his hand for her to shake. She stared at it for a second and they shook hands. Deal. Blue smiled to myself. Maybe tomorrow they could get to know each other. Opening the door to the house she smelled something burning. Slowly approaching the kitchen, Blue heard a voice shouting inappropriate words at the stove. It was Leo. What are you doing? She yelled hoping to scare him. He jumped and whatever was in that pan went all over the and floor. Blue you scared me. He had their mom's cupcake printed apron on with jeans and a black t-shirt. She rolled my eyes and began to walk up the stairs. Tripping over the last step she finally made it back downstairs. She pulled her sweater sleeves over her hands and walked into the kitchen. Ponytail waved side to side and she skipped to the refrigerator grabbing some apple juice and going to the living room where Leo now was. He sat looking down at his phone while the news played on the TV. What happened to you last night? She asked sitting crisscross on the couch opposite to him. I stayed out with Stella. I'm sorry I lost track of time. Seems like everyone's apologizing today. Mumbled Blue, playing with a loose string on her sweatpants. What? He asked looking up from his phone and over to her. She sighed nothing getting up and walked out to the backyard. The sun was going down as she laid on the outside furniture and opened her juice. Maybe things will change. Not if you don't change them yeah we have to change them for the better or we'll be left in the darkness. 
There is no we. Blue whispered back to the voices as her eyes drifted shut. Leo came out to the backyard to find Blue fast asleep. He swiftly picked her up and brought her in the house careful not to wake her. Laying her in bed he pulled the covers over her and looked at his little sister. Her face had a frown and her eyebrows furrowed. Where did things go wrong? Leo asked himself but he knew all too well. By all you lovely people. Memories. Hey Blue grabbed this. Leo yelled over the loud fireworks. She grabbed the sparkler and flashed it around. Her little eyes lighting up at the sight. Six-year-old Blue looked amazed as she watched these wonderful colors fly in the air. It's beautiful, isn't it? Their father said standing behind them with their mother right next to him. Leo nodded as they watched the show. Blue shouted when the Big Bang happened and everyone laughed. Blue giggled not really knowing what they were laughing at but she wanted to laugh too. Come on kids let's start heading home. They piled into the car with their things they brought to the park. Blue stared out the window seeing things differently. Everything was beautiful in her eyes but this was gorgeous. She fell asleep on Leo and wished every day was like that but that's when things began to tumble. Dot 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 stop. Leave me alone. Blue yelled throwing her shoes on the ground like a baby. It was her 10th birthday and her parents notices she'd been having these episodes lately. After she just was getting better. A few years before they decided to take her to the doctors because she would snap in an instant out of nowhere become a different person. Doctors said she has dissociative identity disorder. Her parents tried to deny it at first but they soon had to accept it. They had no choice but to. She got out of control sometimes but therapy helped. Not a lot though. So they decided to put her on pills. She wouldn't have it. Please calm down, Blue. Her mother sighed. Blue listen to your mother now. Her father yelled. Her parents tried to busy themselves with work more and leave Leo with babysitting duty. Leo being smart he joined after school activities ignoring his parents and their neglect. Instead they took some days where one stays home and the other works. That plan worked for a while. Blue stuck her tongue out and obeyed. Wake up. Blue was being shaken, he awoke by a sleepy voice. Dugleo go away. She yawned, slapping his hands and rolling over. Get up it's time for you to go to school. He yawned walking out and closing the door behind him. Happy 4th of July everyone. Bonding time. Stretching Blue through her bag in get locker. Hey Blue. She closed the locker holding her binder tight. To her left Honor stood smiling. Hey Honor. Blue smiled as they began walking down the hall. So you're still coming today right? He asked raising an eyebrow. Yeah. She nodding approaching her first class. Okay. See you soon. He waved and dashed down the hall weaving though the crowd of people shaking her head and walked into a class. Today seems to be going good so far. Dot 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 blue through her bag by the front door and ran upstairs leaving Leo wondering why she was in such a rush. She got dressed in a plant blue shirt and some black leggings. Leaving head hair in a ponytail and ran back downstairs slipping the pair of black pants back on. Leo sat in the living room looking like an old man reading the newspaper. Hey Leo can you take me to a friend's house? Blue asked standing in front of him. He instantly put the newspaper down and looked at me. Who is this friend question mark is it a boy or girl? Does this person know our parents? Where does this person live? UMM? Just kidding. I trust you. I hope dot 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 so sure I'll drop you off. Just call when you wanna be picked up. Ha ha yeah dot 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 she nervously laughed.
he can be so creepy sometimes. Dot 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 blue. May yelled hugging me to death as she walked through the door. Connor and May lived in a gigantic house. Their parents bring in good money and they basically get what they want. Blue was amazed with the size of the house. It was like what you see in the movies. With the maids, the chandelier, big yard, everything. Hey! Blue smiled trying to keep her cool. She waved back to Leo's car as he drove off. Walking inside she seen the whole group was here. Such Blue. Connor said as he was playing Xbox with Jace and Carter. She sat next to me on the couch. Where's your parents? Blue asked the house being really quite other than the maids cleaning. Out at some fancy dinner. They honestly don't care about what we do. May answered. Oh. She said feels bad for asking but it seemed like she didn't care either. They chatted then made popcorn which ended up everywhere on the floor and living room. Luckily the maid cleaned it up scolding them about being reckless. They laughed and goofed around, watched some horror movies. Blue being blue she was scared and cuddled up next to Connor with a pillow. Tonight was awesome and she wished it would never end but for her good things always end. So you had fun at this friend's house. Leo asked putting quotation marks around friends. Yes, and what do you mean friends? They're literally my friends. Blue laughed in her seat. Okay, sure. He rolled his eyes smiling, the light turning green. Dot anyway, as dinner tonight is Chinese food since it's about to be nine and I wanted to cook but... She sighed shaking her head. Yeah, you're bad at cooking. Why did you want to cook anyway? Well, Stella should be on her way to our house right now. He said slowly, afraid of her reaction. Blue smiled at him. Things were going good and nothing could kill her mood. Not even the demon called Stella. Author note. Hey everyone exclamation point exclamation point exclamation point so I just wanted to say that I have the ice.fm account which is Carousalu Labby. If anyone has questions or you just want to tell me something you can. Don't be shy. I'll be answering all questions. Have a nice day. She devil. They slowly pulled into the driveway arriving at the same time as Stella. Hope I didn't come late. She said giving Leo a hug. No, we got here at the same time. Blue got her house key out and walked in, leaving the two lunch birds behind her. I'm gonna get the number for the Chinese food. Be right back. She sat in the recliner while Stella sat on the couch. So dot 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 hello Stella. Where did you to go today? Leo and I were supposed to meet up earlier but said he had to take you somewhere. Um, why do you always take up his time? She glared at me. He is my brother. Did you forget? Blue asked her arching an eyebrow. Just don't get in the way anymore. Look you're just his girlfriend I'm his sister. I live with him so that's gonna be hard to do. She said sarcastically. I have an advantage. She smirked. What is that? Blue asked getting a little nervous. He loves me too much. Why do you think he left here in the first place? She smiled. Blue began to panic. He said he left to find a food job. He wouldn't just leave them for a stupid girl. Sure she was overreacting but he couldn't have left them or more say her forced Ella. In the time that she need him the most. Her brain was cluttered with thoughts that she didn't want. Knowing what was gonna happen after that. Dot 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 blue quickly stood up. Grabbing a book on the side table and threw it at Stella. It's not true. She screamed. Stella dodged the book looking at blue like she had her heads. Sadly Stella didn't know that this was one of Blue's personalities, Skylar.
Stella is the one who made Blue mad so it's only fair to let Skylar take her anger out on her. Leo ran in the living room seeing a furious Blue and a frightened Stella. Seeing the broken lamp on the floor and Blue's demeanor he could tell that is wasn't Blue. Leo quickly grabbed hold of Blue even though she kicked and screamed. He brought her into the kitchen and tried to calm her down. Leave me alone. She yelled trying to get out of Leo's hold. Calm down. He said hugging her. That used to work when she was younger. Slowly she stopped and they just stood there, leaving Stella in the living room wondering what happened. Forgive and forget. Rolling over, Blue kissed the floor instantly. Moaning she slowly stood up clutching her head. Shutting off the alarm she stretches. Squinting her eyes she looked around and seen she was in her bedroom. How did I get here again? She thought. Blue you okay? Leo asked bursting in the room. Yeah. She said in a duh tone. I heard a loud thump come from your room that scared me. He sighed. How'd I get here last night? She asked saying that she was still in her clothes from yesterday. Leo came and sat on the edge of the bed while Blue sat next to him. Well Stella came over last night and I guess you didn't have the best conversation and you got mad which led to you not being you. Oh God did I hurt her? Blue asked very worried now. No exclamation point no. Just threw some things at her but she fine and I explained what had happened to her. After that she went home. Blue looked down at her lap messing with the hem of her shirt. Sorry. I put some waffles in the toaster so come down after you're done getting ready. He walked out of the room saying nothing else. It's not my fault, right? She asked herself. Blue sat in class drawing in her science notebook, listening to half of the lesson. From the corner of her eye she could see Jess sitting there staring at her. Blue turned and looked at her. She froze for a second before waiting. Blue ignored her and continued doodling. The bell rang as she gathered her papers and binder. Heating out the door but was stopped by a hand tapping her shoulder. Blue can we talk? I have class to get to. She said trying to avoid this conversation. At lunch I mean. Jess said looking a little hopeful. Sure. Blue said walking away to her third period. Lunch came by too quick. Just because Blue didn't want it to. Hey Blue you okay? May asked as she sat at the table with them. Yeah I'll be right back though. She said setting her lunch down and standing back up. Searching the cafeteria she spotted just at her normal table. What did you want to talk about? Blue asked sitting next to her, rudely interrupting their conversation. Jess turned towards Blue smiling. I want to say I'm sorry you were right. I was being selfish and inconsiderate. I'm going to change my attitude. Also I want to be friends again if you do. She sighed. She couldn't stay mad at Jess over a stupid little fight. Forgive and forget. That's the motto these days. Yeah it sounds nice. Blue gave a small smile. Maybe things are looking up. Together. Yes, A T U R D A Y. So when are they exactly supposed to be home? Blue asked pacing the floor. Chill, Blue. They'll be here any moment. Anyway, since we didn't make it to your appointment on Tuesday, I scheduled the therapist to come here so we can have a family therapy session thing. Is she nodded only half listening. Mom and Dad are coming home today which Blue was very excited for. Even though they didn't leave off on a good note things will be better now. And she missed her mother and father. She sat on the couch taking a deep breath. The time read 1 colon 0 2 p.m. Dot, so when is drive dot Carter coming? Around 5 o'clock so Mom and Dad will be here also. He said getting more comfortable on the couch and returning to his phone. 
Are you going to leave now that they're back? Blue asked frowning. Well, he paused. I was thinking about moving back out here. Really? She cheered. What about Stella? Didn't she come out here just for you? She can always wait. He shrugged. Blue smiled, feeling all happy inside. Dot 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 hello everyone how are you doing? Dr. Dot Carter asked the family. Good. They all replied. The family was happy to be back together after being apart for some time. Once both parents got home Blue cried like a baby and everyone laughed. They all shared what their week was like and laughed together and drive. Dot Carter arrived at 5 o'clock p.m. exactly. Okay then let's get started. You're okay? I laid in bed smiling to myself. The session went very well and everyone's happy. What if things begin to go downhill? Who knows what could happen over time? Maybe a meteor could hit and we all die, who knows? I sighed starting to feel my heartbeat increases all this thinking isn't good. Rolling over I tried to calm down but nothing was working as different scenarios ran through my head. Sitting up I pulled at my hair tears coming out and my breath became shallow. My hands began to shake and I knew I was having a panic attack. Leo, I called. He was the only one who was here currently because mom and dad left to visit someone. Soon Leo came rushing in seeing my state he hurried and got under the covers. He cuddled me whispering sweet nothings trying to calm me down. A few minutes laying there I was calm and only had the hiccups. Great I hate those. Blue what's the matter you were so happy today? Leo asked looking down at me. Just started thinking about the bad things that could happen and I got overwhelmed. I shrugged acting like it was nothing but clearly it was something. Blue Bear don't do that thing where you act like this isn't important. It's not okay. Just drop it. I sighed scooting away from him and turning on my side. You're the one the one who called me in here remember question mark he sighed. I... Just please don't mention it because things are going good and that can't be ruined. I begged. Blue it's okay remember we all have to be honest with each other for now on. It's okay to worry. It's not okay to have a freaking panic attack. I'm overreacting aren't I? I said sitting crisscross and looked him in the eyes. You can't control how you feel. No one can. I sighed letting this conversation end. I laid back down using Leo as a pillow, falling asleep drifting into a nightmare. Love is infinite. Days went by and it was finally summer for Blue. To say she was happy was not the right word, she was blithe. Today was the day they had the whole family over with some friends. It has been a while since they've seen the family so what's not better than a get-together? Blue was getting better and so was everyone else. Leo broke up with Stella after finding out that she was cheating on him. Blue being the loving sister she is screamed told you so then comforted him. She forced him to get a job and to get out there and mingle even though he protested. Still he was very thankful for his little sister Blue and wanted to make sure that she only got the best. There sat Blue at the right of her cousin. She smiled looking along the table and felt that she actually found true happiness now. Finally after all those dark days. Leo looked at her from across the table smile as big as hers. Blue you okay? Her cousin Maggie asked. Yeah. Blue Bean squeezing the younger child in a bear hug. Okay I'll let me go now. Maggie gasped taking deep breaths and gave Blue the glare. Sorry. Blue laughed getting up from the table and threw her plate away. The house was crowded but not that crone with friends and family. Sadly the dinner was a surprise to her so she couldn't invite her friends. Her parents doing a good job at fooling P.H.R. 
As she entered the hallway there stood by the sword was Connor and Layla looking around to find their giddy friend. Blue blinked a couple of times to make sure this was real before they all made eye contact. Standing there for a few seconds she quickly ran up to them, hugging them both with excitement. What are you doing here? She laughed bewildered. Well your parents called ours saying that they were doing the thing and that you would love to have us over. Connor said matter oh factly. JJ says out of town and no and May H has the flu sadly like we're the only ones W who co could make it. Layla smiled. She was better now and was seeing a therapist from time to time. It's no problem I'm just glad you're here. No one told me this. She looked around trying to spot her parents. Anyways follow me we have food in the kitchen. Your family isn't vegetarian right? Connor asked making them laugh. Dot 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 we ll have to do this again. Uncle Steve said to his sister as everyone began leaving saying their goodbyes. For sure, it was fun. Outside Blue walked Layla and Connor out waving goodbye as they got into their cars with their parents. So you had a good time? Leo asked approaching Blue. Good doesn't even explain it. She replied. Leo chuckled at her excitement as they walked back in the house. That was fun wasn't it? Their dad asked once they got in the house. Yes. It's good to see family once in a while. Their mom answered. Maybe reality isn't so bad blue though to herself 